For in Christ alone my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground. Firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace When fears are stilled, when striving cease My comforter, my all in all Here in the love of Christ I stand Christ alone, who took on flesh, fullness of God in helpless babe, this gift of love and righteousness, scorned by the ones he came to save, till on that cross where Jesus died. The wrath of God was satisfied For every sin on Him was laid Here in the death of Christ I live There in the ground body lay, light of the world by darkness slain, bursting forth in glorious day, up from the grave he rose again, and as he stands in victory, since curse has lost its grip on me. I am His, and He is mine, pulled by the precious blood of Christ. No guilt in life, no fear in death, this is the power of Christ in me, from life's first cry to final death, Jesus commands my destiny, no power of hell, no scheme of man, can never plug me from his hand. Calls me home here in the power of Christ. I'll stand. Epiphany. Mm. The time in the church calendar when we recognize the revelation of the Christ child to the Magi, to strangers. But for me, in some of the work I've done previously, to actually reveal the Christ child to Gentiles. Ignore all that's contained in this, what can be put over as a very, very nice story, but the significance is huge. God is showing us that his son is for all, for everyone, for you and for me. We come together to witness this morning, this momentous occasion, as I open our service with the words of invitation. Grace, peace and mercy from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and also with you. So now, if we will, a moment of quiet as we pray, prepare to bring ourselves before God. Let's just be still. God called the light out of darkness and saw that it was good. By his light we see what is true, what is lovely, what is beautiful. In that light he created us and called us to be his people. 
His voice calls us to be his own, his beloved sons and daughters. He tears open the heavens to come with his spirit and fill us with his life. In that spirit, let us respond in prayer, in praise and in worship. Amen. I'm now going to read one of the collects because there, there are alternative collects um, for every Sunday. Uh, and it's one that I thought was particularly good for this time, for, for Epiphany. And I will remind you what uh, a very close friend of mine now, he was my mentor when I was training a long time ago. And he said, always remember the collect of this. One, it collects us all together because across this nation, lots of people will be joining in this same prayer. He also said it collects our thoughts together. So I'm now going to say the colic. Creator of the heavens, who led the Magi by a star to worship the Christ child, guide and sustain us, that he may find our journey's end, that we may find our journey's end in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. As the wise men gave gold to Jesus, symbolizing his kingship, so we give thanks that Jesus is our king. And for the way his love enriches our lives, we celebrate the brightness and glory that came into the world at his birth and pray that we may be worthy of his love. Amen. Now let's sing that beautiful song together, Purify My Heart. Purify my heart, let me be as gold and precious silver. Purify my heart, let me be as gold, pure gold, refine as fire. Holy God, accept our confession. You ask for all of our being. What do we give you? We think back two millennia to when the Christ child was born. 
What would we give the baby? What does the baby ask of us? We say together, Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy. What gifts did the baby receive? Gold, a metal so precious people have died for it. We've robbed the earth of its riches. Forgive us for not giving you the best of us. What's the point of offering you the religious bits if the rest are kept closely guarded? We say together, Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy. Frankincense, a gift for God, the fragrance of worship, giving God the honour that is due to him. Forgive our efforts to worship you only when it's convenient to do so. Forgive us when our actions make words and worship meaningless. We say together, Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy. God of myrrh, we cry out to you in our baffled despair. Forgive us for denying that the reality of pain and suffering, for not giving our pain and suffering to you and for not interceding for others. We say together, Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy. And so now may almighty God, who sent his son into the world to save sinners, bring us his pardon and his peace, now and forever. Amen. Jesus was born in the town of Bethlehem in Judea during the time when Herod was king. Soon afterwards, some men who studied the stars came from the east to Jerusalem and asked, where is the baby born to be king of the Jews? We saw his star when it came up in the east and we have come to worship him. When King Herod heard about this, he was very upset and so was everyone else in Jerusalem. He called together the chief priests and the teachers of the law and asked them, where will the Messiah be born? In the town of Bethlehem in Judea, they answered, for this is what the prophet wrote. Bethlehem in the land of Judah, you are by no means the least of the leading cities of Judah. For from you will come a leader who will guide my people Israel. So Herod called the visitors from the east to a secret meeting and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem with these instructions. Go and make a careful search for the child and when you find him let me know, so that I too may go and worship him. And so they left, and on their way they saw the same star they had, been, they had seen in the east. When they saw it, how happy they were, what joy was theirs. It went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. Where the child was. They went into the house. And when they saw the child with his mother Mary, they knelt down and worshipped him. They brought out their gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh and presented them to him. Then they returned to their country by another road, since God had warned them in a dream not to go back to Herod. Paul's work for the Gentiles. 
For this reason, I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ, for the sake of you Gentiles, pray to God. Surely you have heard that God in his grace has given me this work to do for your good. God revealed his secret plan and made it known to me. I have written briefly about this, and if you will read what I have written, you can learn about my understanding of the secret of Christ. In past times, mankind was not told this secret, but God has revealed it now by the Spirit to his holy apostles and prophets. The secret is that by the means of the gospel, the Gentiles have a part to play with the Jews in God's blessings. They are members of the same body and share in the promise that God made through Christ Jesus. I was made a servant of the gospel by God's special gift, which he gave me through the working of his power. I am less than the least of all God's people, yet God gave me this privilege of taking to the Gentiles the good news about the infinite riches of Christ and of making all people see how great, how God's secret plan is to be put into effect. God, who is the creator of all things, kept his secret hidden through all the past ages in order that at the present time, by means of the church, the angelic rulers and powers in the heavenly world might learn of his wisdom in all its different forms. God did this according to his eternal purpose, which he achieved through Christ Jesus our Lord. In union with Christ and through our faith in him, we have the boldness to go into God's presence with all confidence. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Happy New Year. Have you made some resolutions? No, no. If you have, have you have you kept them so far? I mean, we are three days in. Oh, Jude, well done. We're not going to ask what the resolution was. That's just kind of tempting fate, isn't it? So we're, we're just three days in, but well done. OK, uh, remember this. What can I give him, poor as I am? If I were a shepherd, I would bring a lamb. If I were a wise man, I would do my part. Well, here we are again. Same carol, different occasion. Today it's Epiphany, or at least it will be on Wednesday. Apparently the wise men came on a Wednesday. I think it was maybe maybe half price bus passes. I don't know. Is that what happens on Wednesdays in Kidderminster? I'm not entirely sure. Anyway, it's Wednesday when they actually come. But we're thinking a little bit about them today and those words to that carol were where i finished my talk on christmas morning if you remember when we thought around light and dark and hope and despair and us what can i give him give my heart well today we switch our focus to the travelers from the east the Magi, the Zoroastrian priests, probably from South Iran, the fire worshippers. This was the major religion of the East for about maybe 1200, 1500 years. Um, now, sometimes when I come to write a talk, I find there's kind of a, a single, obvious, straightforward idea that kind of leaps out. A bit like when Jesus tells his parables, he has kind of a, a clear focus. So it might be light or dark or hope or despair. But at other times, I just find there are so many ideas that it, I could take from a passage that it's more about what do I not say than what I do say. Well, this one, Melchior, Balthazar, Casper, one in a taxi, one in a car, one on a scooter, tooting his hooter. No. But those are the three guys, if you remember them. So is this a theme of journey? Is this a theme of kingship? Is this a theme of homage or gifts? Gold for a king, frankincense for a deity, myrrh for death. 
Is it the message comes to the Gentiles as well as the Jews? Is it about following God's leading? I mean, there are just so many ideas and themes and you will have heard so many talks about them. So which one do I choose? Well, every idea has a season, I believe, and that's inspired by the work of the Holy Spirit in us. That's why I don't use sermons twice. When we come to the Bible, we have God's living word in our hands and in our hearts. And so we look for what is God saying today for us, for our community, for our church, for our parish, for our nation. What is God saying to encourage us, to support us in our life together, to challenge us to go further and deeper as individuals and as community? And we always have a choice. We listen to what we believe God is saying. We weigh it in prayer and with each other. And then we make the choice. Do I change? Because what I've heard makes me need to change. Or do I just stay as I am? And it's these small changes that we and our that help us as individuals to grow and help us as churches to grow. Small, individual, often feeling insignificant choices and changes that each of us makes that collectively helps God's kingdom to grow in our lives, in his church and in his world. So, no pressure there then, but I think we ought to pray. For Father God, you place so many calls on our lives at this point. We want to hear your voice for today. We want to know what you are saying at this point, And we want to be changed because of it. Amen. So thank you, Paul. And thank you, Anne, for your reading today. Wise men from the east came to Jerusalem saying, where is he who has been born king of the Jews? Now, yesterday... Helen and I went out for a walk with our friend from across the road, Bethan. We went to Hercut Pools. Do you know it? It's a bit of a favourite of ours. Yeah, that's right. So we, when we go up there, we have our route we normally go on. And it's round the edge. We either go clockwise or we go anti-clockwise. OK, that's our normal route. Um, but with Bethan, she doesn't do that route. She took us a different way, one we hadn't travelled before. She took us through the middle. Now, I know, I know, I can see shocked faces. Uh, let me just show you. This is the way she took us. So can you see that? Yeah. So we're actually going through the middle of Hercut Woods. And behold, another thing we didn't know. We found this in the middle. It's the Three Bears picnic table. Have you seen that before? Now we have walked around Hercut Woods that many times and we'd never seen it. It was a total revelation. Definitely the highlight of our walk. Now, I'm sure for many of you during this time, going for a walk has been one of the things that has just kept you sane. Am I right? Getting out being outdoors, maybe even seeing a real person. Yeah, absolutely. Feeling nature on your face, feeling nature under your feet. And you will each have your own favourite journeys, I guess. I often see them on your Facebook posts, so keep them coming. Now, the Apostle Paul, when he's writing in Ephesians, had been on a journey as well. It had started a long time before with his persecution of the Jerusalem church and it had brought him to his knees on the road to Damascus in Syria where he had been blinded by the light of the risen Christ. Now Malachi and Nathaniel, they did that didn't they? Do you remember seeing their Lego story of the life of Paul? They brought it and uh, we know they might have had a little bit of adult help, but they brought it to an absolutely rapt audience 
about the life of Paul and it was powerful. Well now his journey has taken him to a Roman prison. He's in chains and so he writes to the church at Ephesus in about AD 62. Well how do we know this? Verse 1, I Paul, a prisoner for Christ Jesus. Chapter 4, I therefore a prisoner for the Lord. And chapter 6, I am an ambassador in chains. Paul's choices, his resolutions, have had serious consequences for him. And so we have three journeys. Paul, the Magi, and Helen, and Bethan, and I yesterday. For Paul, it ended three years later in AD 65 when he was beheaded for his faith. The end of his earthly journey. For Helen and I, and for the Magi, the point where we stopped, well, it was only halfway. It's just halfway and I think that's really significant. And that, that's the idea I want us to draw our attention to this morning. So let's go back to those travellers from the east. When they saw the child, they fell down and worshipped him. And opening their gifts, treasures, they offered him gifts of gold, of frankincense, of myrrh. We know the story, don't we? Really expensive. High value gifts far beyond what probably you or I would be able to give. What can I give him, poor as I am? But what was the cost of those gifts? What was the personal cost involved in giving a high value item? Think back now to your Christmas, a Christmas like no other. What do you now treasure from that moment? The socks, the books, the perfume, the toys, all gratefully received and given with hearts of love. But for me, what I now treasure is the love of people that I love. Is that for you as well? The love of people that you love, whether you could see them or whether you had to virtually be with them. In the prophet Micah, we read this. Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams or ten thousands of rivers of oil? He has shown you people what is good and what does the Lord require of you to act justly? to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God. For if anyone, Jesus goes on in Matthew's gospel to say this, if anyone would follow after me, let them deny themselves, take up their cross and follow me on the journey that I am going. I've just added that extra sentence. Do what I do, say what I say, walk where I walk. And so our Magi, I mean, they give these expensive gifts and then they go home. Being warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they go home a different way. And that's what's been niggling with me. That's what's kind of bothering me about this passage. This time when I look at it, it's not the guiding star to Bethlehem. It's not the high value, low personal cost gifts or they, they do teach us about God. What's bothering me this time is that they were only halfway there when they met Christ. This encounter with Christ incarnate, Christ made flesh, wasn't the end of the journey. It was, as we see in the life of Paul, perhaps only the beginning of the next part of the journey. Did they, in that moment of encounter, perceive the true significance of what God had done in coming to earth as a baby? Well, if they did, we don't know about it. If they went home, 
were they changed? Did the word made flesh go in one ear and out the other? Now, Paul knew the significance of what God had done, for he writes, it is by grace that we are saved. No longer strangers, but fellow citizens with God's people being built together and becoming a dwelling place in which God lives by his spirit. And then he goes on in chapter three. For this reason, I'm in chains. For this reason, I was made a minister by the working of his mighty power. For this reason, the manifold wisdom of God is made known by his church. For this reason, we have boldness and access with confidence to God. Three different journeys, each with a place of significance halfway there. A point of choice, a point of resolving what to do next. Now, Paul knew the reason for his imprisonment. He chose that path. He chose to go to his death. He was prepared to journey home a different way because he encountered the risen Christ. He ends up in a Roman prison, a prisoner for Christ. The Magi, now they bring high value, low personal cost gifts to Jesus. And then they go home a different way. But I fear that they may have been essentially unchanged or unchallenged. And then there's you and me. Our, we're on personal journeys with Christ, aren't we? I think we're halfway there. How will you journey onwards differently because today you encounter Christ? Now, I opened up by saying that we weigh up what God might be saying to us in prayer, in discussion, and then we make a choice. But well, we all have a choice today as individuals and then as a church to be changed by our encounter with Jesus as Paul was changed. Or maybe just journey home the same. The word made flesh in one ear and out the other, more like the Magi. Paul forever changed. The Mag Magi, I may be doing them down, but there's only a hundred thousand Zoroastrians left now, apparently. And what about you? Now, yesterday, Bethan took us a different way home a different way. We walked a different route. And we know Bethan better because she took us that way. Amen. Brother, sister, let me serve you. Let me be as Christ to you. Pray that I may have the grace to let you be my servant too. We are pilgrims on a journey and companions on the road. We are here to help each other walk the mile and ever long. I will hold the Christ light for you in the night time of your fear. I will hold my hand out to you. Speak the peace you long to hear. I will weep when you are weeping, when we love our love with you. 
I will share your joy and sorrow till we've seen this journey through. When we sing to God in heaven, we shall find such harmony. Born with all we've known together of Christ's love and agony. For brother, sister, let me serve you. Let me be as Christ to you. Pray that I may have the grace to let you be my servant too. So, do you believe and trust in God the Father, source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Son, who took our human nature, died for us, and rose again. We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known to the world? We believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. So I'm now going to hand you over to David, who's going to tell us what we'll be doing for our intercessory prayer this week. Thank you. Um, as we come to prayer, uh, Karen, I know that you would just like to talk to us about parish prayer. Happy New Year, everyone. Um, yes, I just want to um, let you know that parish prayer is restarting this Wednesday. It's a super opportunity for us all to join together across the parish to pray for various issues, both locally and worldwide. Um, and we have an opportunity to join together at 7.20 on Wednesday evenings, um, every fortnight. Um, we just gather together for 10 minutes and then the prayer element starts at half past seven for half an hour and it finishes um, promptly at eight o'clock just so you know if you've attended before you should already be receiving the link for it and um, if you want to join and haven't done so before just email parishcoms at kidderminstereast.org.uk be lovely to see lots of people there on wednesday thank you some quiet music playing for you to reflect uh, or maybe just to pray with the person who's at home with you sometimes in our busy lives we don't have the time to pray with the people at home do we so there's an opportunity there and um, there are a few maybe just some starters uh, for your prayer which i'll just mention now uh, which are in my mind you might have other things that you wish also are in your mind that those affected by the earthquake in croatia and the homelessness and the pain that that has caused for those suffering in norway after the landslip for those in hospitals who are keeping us safe and well, trying to roll out a vaccine in very difficult circumstances. For those in schools and colleges who are trying to educate our children and yet keep themselves and those children safe in what are really difficult times. For those, and we will probably know them, whose mental health is suffering because of this prolonged season. Now, as we come together, as our Saviour taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation but deliver us, deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. 
remember as we remember that continuing journey that david spoke to us about we say together christ you are before us this is what gives us courage to go on it is you who directs it is you who beckons so we dedicate ourselves and we bless you now go now in the peace of god which passes all understanding to guard our hearts and our thoughts in Christ Jesus. Amen.